The announcement that Origin Energy will close its Araring power station in 2025, seven years earlier than previously planned, also has huge political implications in the sensitive New South Wales federal seat of Hunter. Business editor Ross Greenwood joins me now. Ross, take me through the logic of closing the power station, which supplies 20% of New South Wales. Yeah, so I've been in touch with the uh, energy grid operator, that is uh, the uh, Australian energy market operator, AMO, this morning. And effectively what's happening here is that the coal-fired power stations are just simply losing economic viability. Not only in many cases are they ageing, uh, but the second part about this is that they're literally being overrun. The grid's being overrun by rooftop solar power. So all of those people who have gone out there and got solar power on their roofs and they're putting much of that back into the grid... Well, re really, in many ways, this is meaning that the uh, coal-fired power stations, which have to operate continually, are sitting by idly. And so, as a result of this, the economics of running those coal-fired power stations is becoming less and less viable as the years go on. So, when the power stations are older, especially in the case of, say, Erraring is uh, one very good example of that, um, it, it really means that bringing forward the end of them uh, becomes a much more easy option, I guess, for the companies involved. Now, the other side of this conversation is really all about not just the politics, because Joel Fitzgibbon, uh, the Labor candidate who said he's standing down at the next federal election, holds the seat by just 3%. And the important part about this is at the last election, it was one nation that picked up 21% of the votes in this seat of Hunter. So federally, it's a really important seat for all of the parties involved, because, again, it's the marginal party, in particular one nation, that has big influence in this, uh, in this electorate as well. Then you come to the final part about this, about industry. Industry in particular, big aluminium smelters, um, uh, makers of fertilisers, um, steel mills, they need continuous power 24 hours a day. And so, really, if the government... You heard Matt Keane earlier say that the government wants to invest heavily into batteries. What that's all about is trying to make certain that industry is not disrupted and that while, really, the sun is down and there is no rooftop solar going in, in excess during the day times, that there is enough to make certain that industry is viable and that, indeed, many other jobs, not that it's just the jobs at these power stations, can be, preser be preserved long term. Yeah, it's uh, extraordinary. Can't wait to see the political reaction out of Canberra. We've already heard from uh, Matt Keane this morning. He's obviously focused on a jobs package and says, uh, well, confident that he can fill this void with, with renewable energy. Your initial thoughts on that, Ross? Well, it's interesting because, yes, there are big battery projects coming in Australia rapidly, like really quickly, uh, and you can't discount the, the fact that really the technology is changing very, very quickly. But can I just say that given what we've seen in the last little while with the closure of the power stations from AGL, they're bringing them forward, but they're younger power stations, and so they're out into the late, 19, uh, late 2030s and to 2045. But the important thing about this is what I think you're seeing, even this week, is a tipping point a tipping point in the way in which Australia gets ele its electricity. It's really now a case where there is so much solar rooftop and, indeed, wind farms, solar farms, all these things feeding into the grid. The important aspect of this is to have the batteries that are big enough and commercial enough to, to be pr able to provide the shortfall in electricity's when the sun doesn't shine, when the wind doesn't blow. And that is really one of the keys. And in many ways, I think this is the reason why Matt Keane today has said... He wants to invest heavily in these batteries. So, say, for example, uh, the one that's in South Australia, built by Tesla, will really, really be a, a stopgap in the case of about 15 minutes of electricity. So that's not big enough. It's not viable enough. So it's going to be either gas, it's going to be hydro, but it's got to be these giant batteries that also provide the power on an ongoing and sustainable basis for businesses around Australia. Yeah, there might be a bit of rewriting of energy uh, policies in the lead-up to the election. We will see. Now, this is not the only big story today. Crown, which agreed to that $8.9 billion merger on Monday, has today released its latest profit along with its rival star. Yeah, they both have today come out. Uh, we'll be speaking, in fact, with the star boss, Matt Beckier, uh, for Business Now a little later on. Uh, but the important part about this is that both of them have been affected by COVID and both of them have seen uh, losses over the past period of time. If we show you what those uh, graphics are right now, what we can actually tell you is, effectively, as they come up, 
that the Crown loss, $196 million, even though revenue here was better than last year. And that's because there weren't as many days of lockdown, in particular in Victoria, as what there had been affecting that Melbourne casino. But, of course, it's also been disrupted significantly because the gaming floors at its Sydney casino have never been open as a result of all of the ongoing investigations by the Independent Liquor and Gaming Authority in New South Wales. If we go to Star now, what you can see is the story is not dissimilar. Here, the lost $74 million the revenue down by 23%. There's also an inquiry into Star being undertaken by the New South Wales regulator ILGA, but also by Austrac, the anti-money laundering organisation as well, which Star today said it will be fully cooperating with. OK, now there's some big names out today uh, reporting profits. Bunnings, Officework, West Farmers, Telstra. What we've seen over the last couple of days, Ross, is that 75% of companies in this uh, reporting season are reporting better than expected profits. Yes, that... they are. But yeah. then some of them are dramatically affected by what's taking place at the moment. West Farmers, one classic example. So really, in the case of West Farmers, if we can bring that profit up, we can show you um, that it's actually OK, but the profit is down 14%, $1.2 billion. The revenue here is just off a little bit. The dividend has also been cut here. But it's really the fact that they've been so adversely affected by the closures. So it's Kmart and Officeworks that have had the biggest impact from that. Uh, and in fact, I think they've indicated that there's something like 20% of the total store time that they've got has actually been closed during this period of time. So this is 34,000 trading days have been lost across those three businesses. That gives you a sense of just the impact of what the lockdowns have had on these companies. Wow. OK, my head's spinning. Ross, thanks so much. We'll get it all from you at 4.30 this afternoon. Looking forward to it. No problems at all.